she never, um, she never was a real activist. I mean, she was someone, though, who uh, believed in, uh, <coughs> the, uh, in what would I like to say, in, in the big picture of democracy. She really believed that nobody should have too much money, that we should all share it. And if you made over a certain amount, you should give it all back. And uh, she was, um, she voted for Adlai Stevenson back in the 50s. And she made me wear an Adlai Stevenson button to school. And I was the only third grader <laughs> that had an Adlai Stevenson button on. And I was just pushed aside <laughs> when the Ike songs came on. I, you, you have the Ike songs in here <laughs> that, that, that are actually written in the book. I mean, you remember those. Yeah, they're those pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but when I had a daughter, I started to think about the big picture of the world. And that was, well, really 34 years ago. She is now um, an adult. But at the time when I had her, I just thought I, we couldn't be an island onto ourselves there in Berkeley, that what was happening beyond that was inevitably going to affect the way that we lived in Berkeley. And I thought about my teaching and how public education is our last truly democratic institution. Mm -hmm. Nearly every child goes to school. And I thought that's the place to reach them, is when they're very little and bring them into a really positive relationship to food and to nature. And all of my Montessori training just sort of came back to me. And uh, she believed in educating the whole child, in educating the senses, because those are our pathways into our minds, our touch, our taste, our smell, our seeing, our listening. And if our, if our uh, senses are closed down, we are not able to connect with the world around us. And I really believe that our senses have been closed down many uh, in the way that Montessori talked about her work in the slums of Naples and in India. But ours, have been closed down by the fast food culture that we live in. Everything is meant to be fast, cheap, and easy, and we are not touching, and we're not tasting, and we're not gathering at the table anymore. And yet we're telling our children to wait for things and exactly. don't, you know. It's, exactly. Yeah. And when 85% of the kids in this country don't have one meal, with their family, we're losing our, our humanity, our connection with each other, our sharing of food. And those two little girls that you were with in Puerto Rico, the idea that you should wait till everybody has food before you eat, I mean, that's an idea that comes from eating around the table. And knowing how much food there is and being able to share with everybody who's there and saying please and thank you. And um, even though there wasn't anything tasty on my parents' table, <laughs> <laughs> I was very unfortunate that <laughs> yeah, you said your my, fa your favorite that they thing they were Irish and English in the sense. <laughs> Yeah. We didn't have. They were getting you ready. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we did have a victory garden in the backyard in, uh, during the war. My parents started that. And so we had divine corn and tomatoes that I have loved all my life. And um, they dressed me as the queen of the garden for a costume contest. And I had an asparagus skirt. A lettuce leaf top. I had crown of strawberries, peppers, bracelets, and anklets. And, and as I 
tell people, I, I think I remembered that I won. 